a lot in this video we'll be looking at the 2016 GCE paper physics so I have selected some questions that we are going to do question 1 says figure 1.1 shows an experiment which was carried out to measure the time interval of a simple pendulum so you have all the all the information there so you have a b and c now question says the bob was oscillating between a and c state the meaning of the term oscillation what is the meaning of the term oscillation so oscillation is just a vibration so oscillation is a vibration per second that's what an oscillation is so it's just a vibration per second if the pendulum bob took 0 0.20 to swing seconds from A to C so from A to C Get the period now we know that period of the pendulum is equal to time taken over number of complete oscillation time taken is 0 0.2 seconds number of complete oscillation they're saying from a to c remember in the previous video i said when it swings from a to c it makes a half complete oscillation now half is 0 0.5 Okay, those are vibrations now. So now, now we need to find the value of uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5, we get 0 0.4. So we get 0 0.4 seconds. So period is equal to time taken over number of complete rotation. Period is also equal to the reciprocal of frequency. Take note of that. And it says, using your answer in B, determine the frequency of the pendulum or the bulb. Now, frequency is equal to the reciprocal of period. So, this will be 1 over period is 0 0.4. So, saying 1 by, by 0 0.4, get 2.5. So, this will give, will give us, sorry, so give us 2.5 has as frequency or if you want you can say frequency you got number of complete rotation over time taken number of complete oscillation is 0 0.5 which is half which we found and time taken is 0 0.2 so when you divide 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.2 you get still 2.5 has Then question three says, what is meant by the moment of the force about a point? So moment of the force is the, the turning point, like, I, like we discussed earlier. It's just the turning point, all right? It's a turning point of a force from the pivot. Moment of the force about a point depends on two factors. What are they? This is the first factor is the magnitude. Magnitude. The second factor is is distance. Okay, it's distance. Shows in for meter which is pivoted at twenty. You can see that is pivoted at twenty here and balanced so this is a uniform meter so in short it's starting from zero up to 100 centimeters no oh, that a meter is up to 100 centimeters it was runs now there's a 3.15 newton weight here place that 10 calculate the weight of the meter 
Now, there's something that you need to understand when it comes to the weight of something. The weight is always at the center of an object. This is what we call center of weight. So it's already at the center of an object. Now, in this case, the center is 50. So that's why we need to find our weight. Now, remember, we have this weight going this direction, and we have this weight of the ruler going the other direction. So we have clockwise and anticlockwise moments. Now, this clockwise moment should be equal to this anticlockwise moment. So I'm saying, let's call this as force one. Let's call the distance of this from the pivot as distance C1. Let's call this force here as F2. And the distance of this one from the pivot, let's call it distance 2. Therefore, we are saying to be F1 times D1, which is equal to F2 times distance 2. This is what we call the principle of moment. So let me get rid of this here. Now, we know that we have all the information there. We have all the information. We have F1, which is 3.15 newtons. F2, we don't have. That's what we are looking for. Distance 1 is the distance of this from the pivot. So it's at 10. So this is 20. So the distance between 20 and 10 is just 10 centimeters. We have distance 2. So the distance from center here, 50, up to 20, which is 30. 30 centimeters. Now we have all the information except this. Hence, F1, we are saying, is 3.15 times. Since the distances are the same, they are all in centimeters, we can use them without converting them into meters. 10 centimeters, which should be equal to x times 30 centimeters. So this will be over 30 centimeters. Over 30 centimeters. So x will be equal to 1. 3.15 times 10 by 30. So 3.15 times 10 by 30. You get 1.05 Newton as the weight. Now this is true for the fact that the distance from here to there is bigger. See, the distance is smaller than this. So you expect this one with a larger distance have a smaller weight. We expect that one with a smaller distance to have a larger weight. Question 5. Figure shows a vibrating turning fork Why? in air. Now, you can see that there are laws. So it's, it's something which is drawn like this. In case you can't see it properly. So I'll try to sketch it here. Like that. Now there are arrows pointing in this direction. And there are also arrows pointing in that direction. Now that sense, so this is a vibrating turning fork. As I said, the nature of the wave produced by the turning fork. Anything vibrating produces sound. <clears throat> That's what you must know. Anything vibrating produces sound. And sound is produced through the vibrations. So the type of wave, sound is, a, is an example of a certain type of wave. What type of wave is that? So we have all two types of wave. That's longitudinal. Longitudinal and so longitudinal. Waves. And trans, transverse. So we have longitudinal and transverse waves. So longitudinal are the waves like sound waves, which are, we can see that this, the motion is going in that direction. Also, the particles are going in the same direction. So this is what we call the longitudinal wave.
show diagrammatically the, the regions created by the OF produced as, as it passes through air. Now, as as a wave, a sound wave in, 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 in specific, is passing through air, it forms compressions and rarefactions. So it forms, so I'll draw it here, so it forms regions where particles are closer together. It also forms regions where particles are less closer together. Like that. Like that. All right, so this is what it forms. So there's a, a compression, there's a refraction, there's a compression, there's a refraction, there's a compression. That's all. Explain what happens to the speed of the wave in air if the rate of vibration of what increases, but the length of the uh, wave produced remains the same. This is, they are talking about the relationship between sound, frequency, and uh, distance, which is the, wa the wavelength. We are saying what happens when you increase the frequency? What happens to the speed when you increase the frequency? Let's give it. Let's look at an example so that we can determine what happens. Imagine we have a frequency of two hertz. So this is F, and the wavelength is four meters. This is the first scenario. The second scenario has four hertz. But if we, we maintain the same because they're saying we maintain it. Speed in the first scenario is equal to frequency, which is 2 times 4, which will give us 8 meters per second. In the second scenario, speed will be equal to 4 times 4, which is equal to 16 meters per second. So we can say that as, as we, you increase the vibration, but you maintain the wavelength, speed still increases. So that's the answer there. So speed increases. Speed increases.